Monte. Magyar egy kiúzatú. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I, I didn't activate my audio, so I, I, I was uh, I was already scolded. Good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are already 20, 81 people. I'm very glad to welcome you all uh, to this, you know, the first um, meeting and the first seminar of uh, on our skin dialogues on beauty. Uh, which is developed by Sapienza, the master in fashion studies, uh, UNICH, which is the association of uh, tanners, and uh, the daily I'm working for, uh, Il Foglio Quotidiano. Um, these uh, meetings, these seminars, are um, intended to promote and explore the complex nature of Made in Italy. Many of you, many of you students ask me a lot of times how it works with Made in Italy. And I say it's a very complex nature. It's the mix of, of different things. So it's a, a mix of culture and arts. And living in such, I think, a beautiful place, you, you wouldn't believe I'm actually sitting uh, on the floor made of glass. And behind and uh, underneath this glass, there is a Roman wall, and I'm in the center of Milan now. We have many guests um, today, uh, which are, uh, I, 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 I present them in order of, uh, not in order of appearance, but by her name, Nicola Beretta, founder and designer of the uh, brand, of the shoes brand Giannico, the master dyer Alessandro Butta, the designer Alessandro Enriquez, founder of the eponymous brand, friend analyst Orietta Pellizzari, and it's a great pleasure to welcome Professor Antonio Sgamellotti, Professor Emeritus of the University of Perugia, academician of the Lincei, co-founder of the Mo Lab, and coordinator of the research group that identified the Egyptian blue in Raphael, Triumph of Galatea. Uh, the meeting will be introduced by the general director of UNICH, Fulvia Bacchi, to whom I leave the floor. I'm sorry, but we have, obviously, for COVID reasons, to, uh, sh to share just one place. So, uh, I leave the floor to Fulvia Bacchi. It's up to you. Hello. Good afternoon to all of you. My name is Fulvia Bacchi and I am the director of UNICH. UNICH is the trade association representing the Italian tanning industry. I hope all of you know what a tannery is. It is the place where they work ice and skin coming from the meat, in the, from the meat industry, a consolidated example of circular economy. As you probably know, Italian leather is an excellence and we have created this location in the center of Milano to celebrate the beauty, the quality and the color of Italian leathers. So we are very proud to host this uh, series of seminar and I want to, thanks, uh, to thank Fabiana Giacomotti and the professor Roman Andò for uh, creating these possibilities to exchange uh, the, um, the, cult the multicultural transversality of Italian manufacturing. Thank you. I hope you enjoy this, uh, this day. And I give the floor to Professor Roman Andò, thanking her for giving us this possibility. Good afternoon. Sorry for being late, but it is a, a matter of, as usual, as a COVID-19 issue. 
uh, family related. So sorry for being late. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, on behalf of the teaching staff of the Master Program in Fashion Studies and the large community of our students, I would like to thank uh, UNIC Concerie Italiane, Il Foglio, and Professor Fabiana Giacomotti for this extraordinary opportunity of encounter and dialogue between the fashion system and the academia. And I also would like uh, to give a special and warm welcome to our guest today, who will give us a speech on the multiple shadows of blue. We are really thrilled to listen to you and learn more about this topic. Uh, let me say just a few words, a few words uh, to remark how important and strategic is the connection between the fashion industry, professionals and the scholars and students in fashion and how this webinar series may integrate and complete traditional training here at university. Uh, when our master program was created five years ago by Alessandro Saggiaro, the structure of the program was taught and built, having in mind this combination of both theoretical and professional skills. And we have made many classes where teachers come from the industry as a Fabiana, well known as a, a teacher of our master program for five years. Um, so the idea is to, uh, to um, investigate also different kinds of methods, uh, teaching, uh, different kinds of teaching materials uh, and different approaches that can be combined together with the traditional academic approach. We also have organized uh, in these uh, five years visits and experiences outside the campus. Uh, so like, for example, our workshop in the fashion industry in Rome and in Italy. And this, is, uh, this was uh, promoted in order to guide our students in the real field of fashion. So this approach has guaranteed our students uh, with an interdisciplinary background and at the same time, the curiosity and the spirit of initiative our institution will continue in achieving these goals. I will continue as the head of the program and we hope to continue to do so thanks to the generosity of partners like the ones involved today. So as I am excited and thrilled to enjoy the seminar, I leave the floor to Fabiana Giacomotti who will introduce and chair the event. Thanks again and uh, have fun. Let's have fun. I hope that everyone will have fun and maybe get some inspiration which I think is mostly very important for fashion. So it's my pleasure and again my honor to leave the floor to Professor Gamellotti, uh, who actually uh, found and made an incredible research and found something uh, which I, I think uh, was uh, um, was received as an extraordinary uh, discovery in Raphael's uh, fresco. So, Professor Gamelotti, it's up to you. Thanks. Maybe you have to open your microphone, please. Right. Just a second. Sorry. Sorry, something is wrong with the presentation. Just a second. Was everything okay? Before. Okay. Right. No. Just a second. Okay, sorry. Uh, good afternoon to everybody and thanks to Fabiana for the word of presentation. I will present the blue palette of Raphael in the fresco Villa Farnesina in Rome. The blue is a 
an important as an important role in art, but not only in art. For instance, last year, the color, the classic blue was chosen as the color of the year by Pantoni. The 2020 was also the year of the Raphael 500 death anniversary. And in this occasion, the Academia Nazionale dei Lincei organized an exhibition Raphael in Villa Farnesina, Galatea in Psyche, of which I was the curator together with Virginia Lapenta, conservator of the villa. Villa Farnesina is a beautiful villa of the beginning of the 16th century. It's a, a suburban villa of Agostino Chigi, the rich banker of the Pope, who called from, from, from outside all the best painters in Rome, among these also Raphael. Nowadays, the Villa Farnesina is the location, representative location of the Academia dei Lincei. Raphael was painting in the two loggia, the loggia of Galatea, with the fresco of the triumph of Galatea on the right, and the loggia of Cupid and Psyche together with his workshop. The, the Raphael blue pigments in Villa Farnesina are the following. In the loggia of Cupid and Psyche, he used azurite, which is a basic carbonite of copper, of uh, intense blue color. Then lapis lazuli, which is a, a, a very expensive, coming from far away, the so-called ultramare, which is a silicate with sulfur. And then smalt, which is a glass containing cobalt. This is in the, in the uh, loggia of uh, Cupid and Psyche. The most extraordinary novelty was found in the Lodge of Galatea, we, where we found for the first time in the Renaissance the Egyptian blue, which is a tetrasilicate of calcium and copper. It is extraordinary because the Egyptian blue is the oldest pigment made by the, the man, 3,000 years before Christ, and then it was very largely diffused in the antiquity, for instance, in Egypt, in Mesopotamia, in Greece, in Rome, and in the empire, and was used until the beginning of the Middle Age, more or less the fifth century, and then it disappeared. And we found again for the first time they say unicum in the triumph of Galatea of Raphael. Let's have a look to the pigment in Loggia of Cupid and Psyche. Lapis Lazul was used for the dress of Juno, the queen of Olympus, is a very expensive, extraordinary pigment. And azurite and smalt was used in the vault of the Loggia of Cupid and Psyche. It was used in two layers. First of all, the smalt, which is a pale blue, and then an upper layer with azurite, which is much more intense on tonality. Unfortunately, the azurite is not very stable in humid condition. You must know that the villa was open into the garden without any windows and door, and there was a flood of the river Tiber coming into the villa. So the conditions were very bad, and the azurite deteriorated quite soon, became black. So it was needed to restore it and it was removed 
leaving the layer of smalt and improving the smalt condition. This is uh, the smalt, as you can see, and only few traces of azurite on the left corner, you can see the remaining of the original azurite. So the conditions nowadays are completely different. On the right, you see the vault of the loggia, how he appears today. On the left, how was at the time of Raphael with the azurite, with the azurite in, in the very intense blue. Let's go to the blues in the Lodge of Galatea. This is a, a beautiful mythological affresco where the nymph Galatea is running away from the Polyphemus on the left. This is a painting by Sebastiano de, del Piombo. And it is in a shell boat pulled by delphins. We knew that the, the, the best of polyphemus from our previous investigation was uh, lapis lazuli. Why, uh, here is a, let's say, a reflectant spectrum, which, seem, which means how the light at different web, wavelengths is reflected by the colors. You see that the blue of polyphemus which is azura, uh, which is uh, lapis lazuli, is completely different from the Galatea one. And already this kind of uh, spectroscopic measurements give some information. Could be probably blue Aegisium, Aegisium blue, but we want to confirm because as I said, this pigment disappeared at that time. This is the, so the hypothesis that we confirm is that Egyptian blue is the blue of the triumph of Galatea. Uh, the, as I already told you, the Egyptian blue is a copper compound, but has an important properties, show peculiar luminescence once that irradiated with visible light. Though those is may be revealed by imaging technique called by IL visible induced luminescence. You see on the left the blue the blue of the Egyptian blue and on the right the luminescence, the white color after irradiation. This is a it's not a Andy Warhol Galatea, Triumph of Galatea, but it's the map of, obtained by X-ray uh, uh, fluorescence where all the color maps different elements. For instance, blue is copper, red is mercury, green is uh, iron, and gray is calcium. And you see that in the sky and the sea, there is a lot of blue. Then we want to check the luminescence. And as you can see, the white of the triumph of Galatea stands for the luminescence. So means that the blue color is actually Egyptian blue. Quite an interesting we checked in the upper part of the Galatea. You see, these are beautiful putti. And then we found, so with a great surprise, that also in the wing of the putti, Raphael used Egyptian blue. You, you can see from this put on the left, you see on the wing, the white of the luminescence, a even more evident on the right foot, you see the luminescence 
on the wheel. So why Raphael reused after almost 10 centuries the Egyptian blue? Raphael at that time was very much interested and involved with the antiquities. He, he was uh, entrusted by the Pope to become a, a conservator of the antiquities in Rome, a sort of a, a super, superintendente delle belle arti antiliterali. This is why he wanted to reuse a very old pigment. And Egyptian blue is a very interesting pigment. Due to the luminescence property, it's nowadays used for many different innovative uh, topics, not just in, as a pigment, but in biomedicine, in telecommunication, in laser technology, in security things. Uh, we carried on a, a seminar one month ago, the 25th of uh, uh, February, on the Academia di Lincei, on uh, the Egyptian blue from the antiquity to the Renaissance. And in that occasion, I launched the initiative, which I called Blue Net, a network of historians and scientists for mon monitoring evolution and circulation of Egyptian blue through the century. And more than 50 institutions have already joined with more than 85 researchers. I want to conclude just with the acknowledgement to the curator of Villa Farnesina, Virginia Lapenta, to the team, scientific team that I coordinated. I want to just mention that this is a, an interesting uh, uh, team composed by researchers from public institutions, CNR, CNR, ENEA, and uh, private institutions as a broker and as the uh, laboratory diagnostic of the La Regione Umbria in Spoleto. I want to, walk, uh, to thank the whole staff of the Villa Farnesina, but mainly I want to uh, kindly uh, thank you for your attention. Now we can have the, a visit of the exhibition, Raphael in Villa Farnesina, Galatea in Psyche. It will be unfortunately a virtual visit, but please, if you come to Rome, come to visit the Villa Fadesina. It deserves actually a visit. Can you launch the, the movie, please?
Thank you. I am ready to answer to any questions later. Uh, uh, we will have a uh, professor uh, Gabelotti will have questions at the end. Unless, yes, yes. Uh, I say okay, that. Right. I, 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 I am every... happy to, to. Okay, thanks. To Thank you so much for your very beautiful and deeper than blue uh, speech, which we all like a lot. I remember when I helped uh, Virginia to get in touch with uh, Walt Disney, which I, I'm, I'm a, 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 a very avid reader. So I'm very glad to see that the whole story came out. So um, well, then we can pass to Alessandro Butta. I leave the floor to him for, uh, because I, I think he is the last uh, Europe in Europe um, cultivator of uh, what's the name of Guado again? Of uh, Isatis Tinctoria, which is yes. uh, the biological name. Yes. No, so, means uh, world. World. Master Buta, it's yes. the floor is for you. Okay. Isatis Tinctoria, okay. The name of the plant. We are speaking about the plant, not uh, uh, mineral dyes. Uh, like uh, told the professor, um, and uh, only only used uh, for textile. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. You well, we hear you, but I think that since we started with uh, frescoes, I think it would be interesting for our students to know that the family of Piero della Francesca. Uh, were um, entrepreneurs in Isatin Stinctoria, and so the fresco of the Madonna of the Quartum of the Given Birth uh, is in uh, is in uh, uh, is painted with this specific and particular blue. No, it's not painted with Isatin Stinctoria. No, is it not? <laughs> no, uh, I don't know the mineral. Um, mineral uh, color they he used, but uh, he only painted the, the image of uh, world blue because uh, uh, Piero della Francesca made uh, the catalog of uh, the textile of his, his father, uh, and uh, we know the exact uh, tone of uh, the textile blue uh, looking uh, Piero della Francesca paintings. Uh, uh, in example, if you look at the uh, Ciclo della Vera Croce, you, you see um, a lot, a lot of uh, um, person, person in blue uh, textile. And, but uh, he didn't use uh, this color on the paintings, Piero della Francesca, because uh, uh, this color changes, uh, makes a reaction with uh, the wall. Uh, the minerals of the walls and becomes uh, uh, dark green uh, or uh, <clears throat> or uh, the, uh, black. So uh, this <clears throat> this uh, color is uh, uh, only for textile, but uh, in history is uh, very very important. Um, the plant uh, uh, do not contain uh, the color, and the color uh, is uh, produced during during. Uh, uh, the process uh, of uh, um, uh, using the plant, but and the plant don't uh, um, is not a food plant, uh, but uh, is was spread by a man 
along uh, all Mediterranean uh, area uh, in prehistoric uh, uh, times uh, uh, um, to and to use uh, to use it uh, uh, to dye textiles uh, because dyeing in blue was very important in prehistoric times. Uh, the color uh, started uh, from the inner part uh, of uh, Turkey and uh, it was uh, taken uh, to Egypt, Northern Africa, and then in all Europe uh, and became uh, um, the, the Celtic blue, uh, the blue of, of the Saxon people. And uh, their, um, Im imagine their body was uh, um, together with blue. They always uh, uh, painted uh, uh, the body, uh, the skin uh, with blue and uh, um, the use of blue um, on the eyes uh, of uh, our women uh, comes uh, from uh, this period, uh, crossing and uh, going through the centuries. Uh, uh, one time was on the faces, uh, uh, on the bodies, now only on the eyes. Uh, but uh, the use is the same. And uh, this plant, uh, uh, like I told uh, before, uh, hasn't, uh, has not uh, um, blue dye in the leaves. Uh, and uh, we don't know how uh, they discovered uh, to, how to extract dye from the leaves uh, because uh, uh, the process is uh, quite uh, uh, difficult. Um, especially the ancient process uh, that uh, mm, uh, you must uh, crush uh, the leaves, uh, ferment uh, and uh, dry and uh, you see the color only uh, in three months uh, of processing. We don't uh, use uh, this system, we use a new system coming uh, from India uh, that uh, involves uh, the use of uh, a good amount of water. But in ancient times, it was uh, quite uh, different. And uh, we must uh, look uh, at ancient, te at ancient tex textiles, uh, uh, thinking uh, uh, at this uh, difficult, uh, um, difficult process. Uh, we started uh, uh, using uh, uh, blue in my farm <coughs> in 1995 with uh, a, a a study of University of Bologna, the, uh, a botanical study. And uh, we had, uh, had that in that period, we had the seeds to go on uh, in researching uh, all about uh, all colors, all botanical, co botanical colors. But uh, Wood, with uh, his color uh, joined uh, with textile and, and blue jeans, was uh, the most inter interesting. And uh, <clears throat> We, we develop a, a new system of extraction and uh, now we are uh, the largest uh, um, area cultivated. We have the largest uh, uh, cultivation of uh, water in Italy now. Uh, even if uh, some people is uh, uh, trying to do this, uh, but <laughs> we are this. Now um, I can show you some, photo, some photos. Uh, uh, if I, if I, <laughs> okay, would, uh, sorry, is an Italian. Okay. This is my farm. Yes, this is the plant. This but is the plant. We actually don't see it. I I'm sorry. I don't see it. No. Oh, we don't. Oh, oh, oh. Um, maybe do, do we have a backup uh, of pictures? No, but uh, Giovanna, can we? Uh, can you? Can you uh, show them? No, because I, because I haven't this presentation. Oh um, dear. Yeah. Okay. Because. Um, in any case, uh, what we can say, it's the color oh. of the, the flag of you, of the European flag. Yes, the color is uh, the blue of Europe because uh, uh, we, um, we are joined uh, to our history and uh, we have uh, um, a period of 
uh, uh, not uh, use of blue in the Roman period. Uh, and uh, because they loved the red, red color, and the blue was uh, the northern people uh, color. And, yes, uh, we, we, we even uh, got the name of as, blue from Germany. Germany. Sorry? Now, in Latin, there is no blue. Uh, in Latin, it is yes, Celeste. Blue comes from Germany. We didn't have that point of blue. So, yes, the, the uh, name I'm blue sure that we could uh, get the presentation then ends in a few seconds. Um, unless, don't, don't worry. Master Bhutta, we can go on with even without. I'm sure that our uh, students yes, can come up and go and search. Uh, okay. Oh, no, uh, this is not that. La Farnesina is not my. No, my no, no we already saw that. We okay. already saw that. So, okay, no. Mm. Don't worry. Uh, uh, I'm sure that our students can me. go on the website and find out these are things Victoria by themselves. Fabiana, sorry, yes, Professor Gamelot, you have to close your presentation. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Okay. Sorry, something happened without my will. Professor Gamelotti, you, you have to close your microphone unless we will hear you. <laughs> that you made up a mess. <laughs> mm. No, it's not working at all. <laughs> Sorry. We tried okay, before. don't worry. I'm sure that uh, um, our students can go on the website and find Isatis um, Tinctoria and uh, maybe could have been a good idea to, to keep your presentation, but don't worry. It's okay. It's not, no problem. So if you, don't, don't worry. You can go on with what, we, what you wanted to say. Yeah, okay. And uh, after the Roman you, you period... You have just a couple of minutes left, uh, yes. I'm sorry. After the Roman period... Okay. Yes. This is the presentation. Oh. Yes, now we can see it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes? Do you see my farm? Okay, this is the plant. You see the plant is green and not blue and uh, becomes blue during the process. And uh, um, this is the plant. And uh, you see the top of the leaves, uh, uh, a blue zone, uh, that uh, means that uh, the plant is ready for, for extraction. Uh, we have two systems of extraction, the ancient system with, uh, that uh, involves uh, uh, great stones uh, crushing the leaves, uh, fermenting uh, and uh, um, making uh, uh, cocagne. Cocagne is a, a word that means pagnotta, uh, bread, and uh, uh, is the name of uh, uh, the bowl of uh, crushed uh, uh, indigo, uh, sorry, uh, wood leaves. But uh, we use a different system. We use water. This is, uh, sorry, this is flower of wood. And this is the harvester. We had uh, in, in our process, uh, we had to uh, buy a very old machine uh, um, and we transformed uh, uh, it uh, and adapted uh, uh, to harvest. Uh, uh, world. Um, this uh, red flower is not the world. Uh, unfortunately, we have not uh, um, um, uh, elements uh, and uh, diserbanti uh, to um, 
to cultivate the world. So we can't apply any um, agricultural um, uh, disturbance. There is a sold. No venoms, okay. Okay. And we uh, bring uh, leaves, uh, harvest the leaves uh, uh, into um, uh, into this tractor and we add the hot water and uh, in uh, we step the leaves for uh, more than two hours and uh, then the fermentation um, begins to form uh, this uh, blue foam <coughs> The, the blue foam is not uh, all uh, the color uh, that is forming, but uh, um, is uh, only the sign that uh, uh, we are uh, on the good way. Uh, this is my uh, this this uh, is my um, factory, and uh, every uh, vessel uh, is uh, one uh, thousand liters of water. And because uh, um, a very, a very uh, little amount of color is uh, in the leaves, uh, and uh, we have uh, a, a percentage of one, one uh, per thousand uh, kilograms uh, uh, of leaves, of fresh leaves. Okay, this is the system I use uh, that is uh, quite simple. We, we last, uh, last year we, we made uh, a, an automatic uh, machine to extract the blue, but uh, definitely uh, this uh, system, uh, agriculture system is much better and uh, much uh, simpler and involves uh, the uh, one person in extraction. That is very important to lower the costs of uh, this uh, system. After one day of processing, uh, a blue slurry is uh, coming uh, out uh, the water and uh, I filter with uh, these uh, cotton filters uh, and uh, uh, out of cotton filters uh, uh, goes uh, water and uh, in the filter remains uh, a, a blue jelly um, that uh, I must, uh, okay, blue jelly in the filters. This is the blue jelly. And uh, all, all the system uh, now um, is, uh, uh, all the trick is uh, uh, eliminating uh, much more water possible to have possibly to reach a powder. Uh, this is blue coming from wood. This is a dry, in my dryer. This is the blue slurry. This is the product. Um, about uh, this, uh, this quantity is about is about uh, uh, 100 kilogram uh, of uh, blue um, jelly, but uh, um, when it's dry, will be not more than five, 10 kilograms. But uh, uh, we we dye in all, not only in blue, but all in uh, in other um, colors coming from vegetables, and. Uh, we uh, dye every kind of fiber. This is cashmere. Uh, previous slide uh, was all uh, wool, and this is uh, silk. And uh, this is uh, very important for us because uh, in, uh, um, in this year we made again the, the ancient system of fermentation uh, using uh, urine. Uh, this, this uh, this uh, woolen suit I, I wear is uh, fermented uh, with uh, uh, the ancient system of uh, ancient uh, centuries. And uh, we see um, from this slide that, that uh, the color must be built up several times uh, on the textile. And uh, this uh, is why uh, a blue, a dark blue dyed uh, with this system was only for rich people. And historically, this uh, world color uh, was uh, for only rich people. Uh, they say uh, that uh, the King of France uh, used uh, a blue built up with uh, 100 dippings. And uh, now, now this is 12 dippings uh, and the, the, the blue is uh, so, uh, sorry, lost. The blue is so dark 
And uh, this is why the blue uh, in the centuries uh, uh, was uh, uh, so expensive, the word blue. But remember, the word blue is only for textile. Uh, we um, also only, for leather, I think. Yes, but uh, leather is uh, a little bit difficult for us because uh, with uh, with leather you can't boil with le leather, and uh, uh, or use hot bath and uh, uh, to dye uh, with uh, wood you must uh, dye um, with uh, a temperature of 50, 50 degrees and in a strong alkali. Uh, condition and uh, this is good for textile but uh, not uh, for leather. We tried and uh, we had success at, um, uh, dyeing uh, leather but it uh, uh, was a, a little bit different system. Uh, okay, um, right. So um, I, can... I, I, I must ask you to go to your conclusions, uh, yes, Master Buddha. My... Oh, it's got, right. My conclusion is that we, we started uh, this uh, research and became uh, a job for us. And uh, my farm uh, uh, has uh, this job like uh, um, principal job, uh, the most important job in the farm. But we are uh, uh, the, the one person, so one uh, farm that makes this in all Europe. Yes. Um, if you want uh, or if you find uh, some uh, uh, blue coming from wood, uh, surely comes from uh, uh, Lemarque. Okay. We, are, we are very glad to hear that and thank you for sharing with us okay. uh, your, your, your research. I thank This is uh, the product. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the little cocagne. You, do you see that? Uh, no, this is not cocagne. This is uh, no. uh, the blue jelly dried, uh, okay. the blue, blue stones. Uh, we made cocagne with the university and there was a very interesting process. Uh, uh, and the blue was used uh, to res for restoration of ancient, ancient textiles. But uh, Okay, uh, thank you. So thank expensive. you so much. Thank you so much, I, uh, because we are a little bit late, so I have to leave immediately the floor uh, to my colleague and friend, Orietta Pelizzari, uh, trend analyst and trend forecaster. Uh, so I leave the floor to her. Thanks. May I start? <laughs> Hello to everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is I'm Orietta Pelizzari. As introduced by Fabiana, I'm a trend advisor, trend online analyst, which seems to be quite a huge word, but practically I'm the person that analyze what's going on in a different international market to present our Italian product, Italian rents. And in specific for uni, I'm the person that put together the international designer that want to use and they want to um, make products and design products using Italian materials. So this is really interesting to understand in this case, Kalas has uh, uh, my colleague right now started to give you the variety of colors that we, we can have it in Italy, starting from art, experimenting also the different pigments. But now let me go more inside of the dynamics that make us understanding how some colors can become a trend. It's important that look at this image, for example. The dynamics take in consideration elements that are more located to social attitude, culture, art, 
techniques. So techniques means manual techniques and also technology that experiment new way to apply the colors. And then all of these elements all together come up with a color and this color become a trend. Now I'll give you some examples, very practical examples in fashion. This picture represents an artist, the artistic flow of the contemporary Asian artist. And I choose this because you can see this light blue green with a touch of pink. These represent for me a variety of tones that Asian people love it. And if you ask me, why are you talking about Asians? Because right now, Asians are those one are the first consumer of the top brands, the luxury brands that produce and make product in Italy. And their way to see product, it's really different than our. And if I had to talk about colors, they have an appreciation of colors, which is completely different than us. If you look at this picture, now I ask to change the slide and to go to fashion products. Look at in this case, mint blue green. These are products from shoes to apparel that evolve the concept of blue in Asia. This, for example, was a Berluti uh, Spring Summer 2020 collection, where you can see that the interpretation of blue mint, it's a way to be closer to Asian consumer. What I want to put together, Asian art interpret blue in several different ways. And this interpretation make the blue lighter, more closer to green, more transparent, and in the meantime, the green, mint green, meaning it's for future, futuristic design, shape which are angular with some edge and corner, and even sh shapes that give futuristic design. You can also see the design of this outfit about the ladies and the girls, the two, the two models. Now, let me show you the next picture. Here we have coals and fluorescent tones in the sneakers, for example, where we have a mixed media, media material. This is an example where technology can achieve the level of the color that is requested by art, culture, and social attitude. It's a Nike new experiment of shoe, and we can see a leather, Napa leather, pure Italian Napa leather, mix it together, nylon mesh, and high frequency technologies to bond thermal stitching. Can you see this pair of shoes really represent a state of the art of a product, which is a contemporary pieces. But then look at also the car. This picture was being taken in Beijing. Is an example that also the luxury car in terms of personalized luxury car need to use these tonal tones of pigments. In this specific way, the shade of blue was being moved from green, light mean green, to cold and fluorescent tones. Why I'm talking about this? Also because the color can change completely the perspective according with the material we are using. Because technology is always the, the main driver for these types of consumer. Now let's move into another slide. This is a pop-up event organized by Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton special collection designed by Virgin Abloh. 
which is the new art director from, uh, from New York. Look at, again, we have another tone where green and blue are mixed together. We have this minty blue and green bluish. Again, we have a touch of tone that give and express the Asian flow, but more in an American way, which when I say is American way, it's bold. So I need more boldness in the contrast. I need more pigment in a certain way. And the fluorescent, it may, it's made by the color block. It's important that because in this specific case, I'm not talking about a product that people buy and use at, but I'm talking about an image, a retail scenario, something that also changes the concept of the branding. Now let me go in the next slide because I want to give you another example. Here is not really related to blue, but it's related to one of the latest, let me say, trend that here in Italy nobody knows, absolutely not, but this is a trend that is happening right now in China. I give you a few images in the slide to give you the example. The story of Xiangqi Palace was one of the best TV novel in 2018, taking back in a television a huge interest from the all the all the all the people that watch or the watcher of the TV. More or less 13 billions of people look at this TV movie. Now, 2021 from January 2021 in Beijing, we had an exhibition called Giorgio Morandi, The Poetic of Stillness, which is still ongoing. All people in, in China put together the two elements. They, they compare Giorgio Morandi palette of this low saturated palette which for them is a way to be an, is a way to interpret an Italian contemporary painter in this tone on tone shade, in this elegance with heritage. And now during our Linea Pelle interview to several architects in China, we had a confirmation that or Chinese wealthy people, they want to have an interior design with an Italian topic, everyone are asking to the interior designers and to architect, may I have some color inspired by Giorgio Morandi, the Italian painter? This is a, an easy way to interpret and to understand the beyond the scene of what's going on with the huge trends. And this is interesting to see it. Of course, I would like to make, I would like to have a lo long time to explain even why they choose some grayish or why you can see in the palette some burgundy or some mauve violet, which are typical tones of Chinese mindset of elegance and heritage, which is perfectly combined to Italy. Let me move now into another couple of examples. I want to see another slide. And I want to go out from blue and I want to go to another tone, pink. Why pink? Because in the last year, 2020, when we ask it to Pantone group, which is one of the biggest groups that made the color trends, they said the color of optimism is blue. But now, after one of the latest research by the tea company Twining, 
In UK, they ask it to all the consumer, which is your color of optimism? And everyone came up with pink. Pink, as you can see in this picture, is related to the female attitude to be optimist all the time. It's related to beauty. And it's even a good way to express the vision of doing something new, innovative, energetic, like red, and in the meantime, to tone down and to be more softer. We can see also in another picture right now, we can see to this Hermes installation in Shanghai, where all the world of Hermes and also all the building, here we are in a French congestion area in Shanghai, everything was being dedicated to pink and fuchsia, also related to gaming. And then let me move to another story that is another example. Can I go to the next slide? Next one, next one again. Okay. Now I want to uh, the previous the previous one, please. The previous slide, please. Okay. Brown palette is the voice of authenticity. What this means? Sustainability is one of the biggest issues, and right now consumer understood that the real material, the real authentic material is sustainable. We are today talking with Unich that represents leather, but we can also talk about wool or silk or cotton when we talk about authentic material. The real color understood and interpreted easily by the consumer is brown. Brown into the shade of orange, brown into the shade of gold, yellow, and brown into the shade of burgundy. And I do think that again, art is the main inspiration. This was one of the installations that was being made by all of you Ella Eliotson at Tate Museum Gallery in London, where you could see this beautiful sun expressing the authentic color. You will see that in a few months, let me say in a few months, the color that will represent better sustainability will be not green, but brown in all of these shades. And with the next slide, which is a conclusion of the story of color meaning, you can see in the store how brown really represents an authentic, natural, original material. Can you see these pair of shoes, this pair of sandals made by leather, pure Napa leather, or uh, with the outsole of leather, I think you can also see these dresses and also the orangey stones and yellowish, yellowish tones. They are completely representing the authenticity. Thank you very much to listen this part. I open uh, a view of looking the color in a very different way. Thank you very much. <coughs> Uh, having this pink shirt, I, I, um, I think I, I, I discovered something more. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Orietta Pelizzari, for the beautiful presentation, very inspiring. I think it will we will explore sooner or later the evolution from pink from being a masculine color to being a feminine color over one century. So I give the floor to Nicola Beretta, uh, founder of Giannico, who makes these beautiful shoes and uh, works a lot on leather and uh, col uh, leather colors, making a lot of effort in choosing and discussing all of this topic. 
Thanks. Uh, the floor is up to you, Nicolo. Thank you, Fabiana. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Um, well, I will share uh, a few pictures with you. Um, here you go. Well, my name is Nicolo Beretta. I am uh, um, uh, the creative director and founder of Giannico, uh, which is a, a shoe brand uh, I founded when I was um, uh, much younger. Um, for those of you that do not know Giannico, here is a few pictures uh, showing my work. Um, Giannico is a very feminine and bold uh, um, kind of shoes brand. Uh, we are very focused in, uh, uh, in the use of colors, obviously, as you can see, the use of very shiny leathers. And uh, uh, we use a lot of uh, crystal applications. Um, those, for example, that you can see right now are actually our best sellers. Um, and, well, um, so as you can see, it's, it, it's very colorful. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very playful uh, shoe brand. I think in shoes you need to have a lot of fun. And uh, I do use a lot of satin. I do use a lot of leather. Um, Janico was founded in 2014 uh, when I was only 17. Uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be uh, mentored by the legendary editor of Vogue Italia, Franca Sottani. Uh, around in 2016, we started receiving uh, a bigger international recognition, uh, being distributed worldwide, uh, and I won a few prizes, uh, including the Who's the Next contest in in, in Rome and and uh, um, and the Future News even Infantino Emerging Talent Award in New York. Um, in 2017, we started partnering with the Chanel Group for the production of our shoes, uh, which were made in uh, Parabiago, uh, just outside Milan. And uh, since 2019, we have been acquired by the Luther Shows Group, uh, which is uh, uh, another company, which, uh, which is also a brand uh, I am creative director of. Um, so from the very beginning, uh, uh, the brand has been, uh, uh, you know, very, very renowned for its exuberant and bold use of colors and uh, crystal applications. I think uh, what, what I always do in my work is I work a lot on, on, the, on the use of color and on the tone sur tone effect. So I always try to match my materials and different materials, but always having the same shades of, uh, of color and this is also what I do uh, with uh, with crystals. So we have a very big partnership with uh, with Swarovski, uh, and uh, and we collaborate a lot in uh, always in finding the right colors to match my leathers and and uh, and, and and fabrics that we use in the collections. Um, here you can see a few of the of the publications we we have had uh, with, with Giannico. We are very much loved by the press and also by celebrities. We had the chance to uh, dress people like Lady Gaga and uh, uh, Dita Von Dies, Bianca Chopra, Nicole Ricci, uh, Caroline Vrilan, Caroline De Megre, Elena Perminova, Isabella Ferrari. Um, but I think uh, two of my biggest muses and um, and, and fans are definitely Olivia Palermo and Giovanna Battaglia. And I think their style is also very quite, uh, you know, it's very much characterized by the use of color as well. And I think this is how, you know, color creates a, an, an empathic relation between the designer and, the, and, and women, uh, because, you know, everyone wants to have fun when it comes to shoes. But anyway, um, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about how uh, I use color in shoes and how uh, I work on my creative process. Um, well, obviously, you know, it, it's a crew work. I have my, my team I work with and um, I do lead the whole design team, uh, which is also includes uh, merchandising and product development managers. Uh, it's, a broad, it's a process that obviously mixes a lot of creativity and uh, analysis also when it comes to colors. Um, and each collection has its own color palette. We uh, always start by 
uh, an inspirational mood board, which uh, every season changes. And, uh, um, and, the, and the leather and the fabrics that we choose are always chosen by uh, which kind of material and which kind of fabric uh, best represents the color palette we are using for, uh, for that season. Um, also, uh, each uh, material and uh, fabric is matched with, uh, with the Swarovski crystal we're going to use uh, uh, for all the applications to create this sort of ton sur ton effect I was telling you about. Um, and so, for example, uh, I will take the Spring Summer 21 uh, as, as an example uh, of the mood board. Uh, this collection was, uh, it's, it's, it, you know, it was a dream of uh, ready, you know, Cadillacs and uh, this is sort of Californian summer and, you know, pink sunsets of the Caribbean. So I wanted to, to give a very summerish feeling to this collection. Uh, you know, tan and swimsuits and, you know, champagne glasses, like very shiny. The Janico is a very sort of bling bling brand. Like it's all about shining shoes and uh, sexy shoes. So I wanted to give it a very um, summerish feeling, as I said, you know, so it was inspired by sorbets and exotic fruits uh, and swimming pools. So um, here are a few uh, images of, of my mood board. Uh, as you can see, pink and light blue and orange and yellow. It was a very, very happy color palette. Also, uh, this color palette was creating during the first lockdown. So, you know, I really wanted to to, to have fun and sort of have, uh, it was a sort of evasion from what we were living at the moment. And, uh, uh, and this is how I translated uh, this uh, kind of uh, mood board and color palette into the collection. So the collection really kind of really reflects uh, uh, the use of uh, these colors in with this pink glitter and uh, um, pink crystals. Uh, the, the, this light blue, which really reminds the color of the of the pools, um, also this kind of uh, nude tan, which is very feminine and very and very sexy, um, matched with the uh, with with the yellow and with the, with the orange. You know, it, it's always about finding the right uh, uh, you know balance in in the match of color. I it's something that kind of really comes naturally to me. Uh, you know, I, looking at art and looking at, uh, you know, the great masters of fashion and art, I think it's really important to uh, choosing, to, to choose the right color. And uh, I love, for example, this, this beautiful leather we have been using, this uh, blue python with, uh, with this uh, iridescent kind of feeling on top. And uh, it, was, uh, it was one of our most successful materials for the past season, also in the shade of green. And uh, yellow, of course, which is a very positive color, full of energy, uh, very summerish. Um, and also, you know, multicolor shoes, I, I really love and I love matching colors and the color blocking. I think it's super important uh, in shoes and in, 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 what, in what we do. Um, also, what I think it's really important uh, uh, when it comes to color is uh, to, to communicate a brand. You know, you know it's uh, uh, fashion, it's not only about creating uh, uh, beautiful uh, shoes or clothes, it's also about, uh, you know, uh, spreading a message and then a, a sort of identity. Uh, and, and color, it's very important in doing so. Um, so, for example, you know, the color palette of our Instagram is very important, for instance, but also uh, in the events we do. For example, uh, in September 2019, we did a wonderful uh, presentation at Gioielliria Pennisi in uh, Via Manzoni in Milan, which is one of the most historic uh, jewel, uh, antique jewelry uh, boutiques in, uh, in Italy. And uh, it was a lot of fun to uh, match all the shoes and all the materials with, the, with these precious stones. So, you know, we matched uh, the, the greens with the emeralds and the, and the pinks with the rubies. And it was, uh, it was so much fun to play with these, uh, you know, incredibly luxurious jewelry pieces. Also, 
uh, in Windows, for example, we uh, did this uh, great window at La Rinascente uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, it was, uh, you know, great to have this rainbow effect with uh, with our Daphne side, which which is one of our best seller, and you know, to really communicate, you know, how colorful the brand is, how fun the brand is, we wanted to create this beautiful sort of shoe closet, uh, but with this rainbow effect. So uh, it was all the same shoes, but in all the different colors. And it was, uh, it was, uh, it was great. Um, well, you know, this is how I use color in my, in my work. And, uh, you know, as you can see, it really, uh, you know, it, it, it's present in all the layers of my, of my creativity and of my work. Uh, from you know the, the the mood board to the you know to the choosing the materials uh, and then you know to the final client and how we communicate the product to the client. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and uh, thank you so much for your attention. We were just saying with Fulvia how beautiful and colorful and fun are your shoes. So going on with colors and playing with colors, I want to leave the floor to Alessandro Enriquez, which coming from Sicily knows a lot about colors. And I, I think it's the source of his inspiration. So uh, Alessandro, it's to you. Hi to everyone. Uh, I am happy to be here. I, I prepare a um, different slide of uh, my work and after a video and uh, I will be quickly and um, I will explain and show you how I use the color and how I do all the, um, uh, all the collection and the collaboration. Just one moment. If I could mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, do you see the presentation? See? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in, here I just take inspiration to make this presentation from the uh, for, from the blue and the shades of the blue. Uh, in the collection, I used to uh, take inspiration from love and from everything that is connected to Italy. Uh, in uh, one, in the first uh, uh, image is uh, all over of art. It seems we are we, we, we have been losing a speaker. Oh Alessandro, I'm afraid you lost your connection. Uh, okay. Here you are again. I was trying to make it something to keep people interested while you were away. So non è colpa mia, giusto? Aspetta un attimo, devo... Wait one second, I will open again the, the presentation. So in the, in the, in the other um, print, we have the My Italian Dreams. Uh, this collection is uh, after the first lockdown, so I thought that I would, would love to give to the people, to the buyer the, uh, and to the press the opportunity to fly with our dreams because everyone wants to find the uh wanted to find and wants to find the freedom uh here is a mix and match of um uh, my print and my way to communicate uh, the italian uh touch and ticks and the and and love in uh, in general 
after um, here we have some looks of the spring summer collection uh, that was the best seller uh, during this uh, uh, campaign and now you can see in uh, different shops uh, in Italy and, uh, uh, and in other country uh, the distribution is uh, very important for us because uh, uh, we are appreciate from the uh, top level like uh, 10 Corso, 10 Corso Como, uh, Biffy Banner here in Milan, for example, and the, all the shops uh, uh, wants to play with the collection and make uh, a selection mixing all the colors that I use uh, in, uh, for the print. Uh, what we used to do during the presentation is to create an exposition that uh, before was uh, not only digital, now we did in digital for the uh, new season. We choose different people from young people to more old people and we make a special uh, picture that um, and we ask to some uh, famous people like here we have uh, Julia Delelis that is the one of the um, uh, in most influencer uh, pop in, in Italy, Floria Fiorucci, the sister of Elio Fiorucci, uh, Paola Marella is a, um, a, a woman that works in television, and Rossella Fiumingo is a sportive girl that is, um, she won a different prize in uh, Scherma that I don't know how to say. Uh, World sport. After we have here other other people like Paolo Stella and uh, and other people, the print uh, we select from this fall winter are connect with the blue, and we have the ships and uh, and the stars. And here the first is a collaboration that we did with Floria Fiorucci with the one of the brand of Helio Love Therapy, and we did uh, we declinate all the old heritage of Helio uh, with all the color mix, uh, mixed with the uh, whole of my color and uh, uh, we work with knitwear and uh, with um, a print and with embroidery and after here we have other kind of um, other print here are the the look from the collection and uh, here there is the uh, the love therapy uh, with uh, Elia Fiorucci, uh, with uh, Floria Fiorucci that is in the middle uh, the, with the capsule. From one side the knitwear and the other side with the guy, the, the print part. The um, exposition we did was with Etoile and with the first dancer from the uh, Teatro La Scala of Milan and uh, you can see few of the uh, people that the dancers that we shoot uh, with uh, with the photographer uh, now I finish with with uh, with the presentation and I put one second uh, the the video of this um, of this uh, last uh, um, uh, collection Okay. Uh, what are we waiting for, for the video to start? Alessandro, are we waiting for the video to start? Don't we don't see video? Yeah, I'm afraid you we don't, don't see the video. video. No, we don't. You don't see the video? No. Uh, wait one second. Okay, right. Okay. So this is the video we did with all the dancers from the, the Teatro La Scala. We asked to all the dancers to play not only with the, with the pieces of the new collection, but to play with all the color that I used and uh, uh, they dance it with uh, with uh, with all the colors
Si è interrotta, parliamo. Cosa? No, si è interrotta la presentazione. No, c'è il video ma non sta... Anyhow, we got the idea. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the video was very beautiful, we got the idea. And thank you very much, Alessandro, for this colorful, again, presentation. And I think you, uh, you know how, uh, how to play with colors. I think that we, in one hour and a half, we uh, made a very long journey around colors, the use of colors and different inspiration. Uh, we put together many things, but I, I, I'm sure that you got the idea that as uh, my, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Sir Paul Smith, say inspiration comes from everything. And uh, it means that following all the different lessons that you, you have in history of art and history, uh, it's of the utmost importance for you uh, to get the idea and to grab this essence of the made in Italy and uh, our manufacturer. Uh, before um, asking our students to put questions to our um, kind speakers, I, I would like Roman and Professor Ando to say something about our cavalcade of today. Uh, okay, it was. I, I don't want to to um, to waste the time uh, dedicated to students because I think they they were really really um, full of curiosity and they want to ask many things to our speakers. So I want to to um, to say that it was a wonderful uh, journey. Again, I, I use the same words of Fabiana because it's uh, this is was the, the the feelings now we have during this presentation, which was a journey through the history and through colors and through materials, and the the, the feel rouge of this presentation is of course uh, this uh, the the sense of creativity also, and I can say also this. Uh, this is a typical aspect of uh, Italian culture. So I'm really, really happy to, to, to us today this, uh, this, um, uh, this talk uh, about colors. And uh, I really thanks our, uh, our uh, speakers for uh, sharing their experience, for sharing their knowledge, for sharing their ideas. And, uh, and also to, to, I think they, they, they will be, and they are, and they will be a, a great source of inspiration for our students. So thanks again. Right, thanks Romana. And uh, I'd like to ask or the participants uh, to write in the chat um, their questions or unless they can uh, raise their hand and open the microphone, okay? So now it's your turn. There's no, no questions for, uh, uh, I mean, you are 114 people. Okay, yes, we have them. Okay, I... I don't see that. Okay, right. There is, oh, uh, amazing presentation. Thank you. It was a pleasure from Camilla Yusufova. I want to speak so, uh, but I don't see any microphone. So Natalia, uh, please write your questions and I, and, and I will uh, forward it to, okay. I wanted to ask which platforms that Gianico used to sell the shoes. Camilla Yusupova. Nicolo. Um, hello, Camilla. Uh, well, uh, to sell the shoes, well, we definitely have uh, um, a strong partnership with uh, Farfetch, but uh, in terms of multi brand platform, but I think our, uh, our e commerce, which is uh, gianicofficial.com, is uh, definitely the best way to, um, you know, that, that, that we use to, to sell our shoes. Um, also, we have a lot of, uh, you know, physical retailers, uh, you know, 
all over the globe, you know, from uh, La Rinascente, uh, Como, and we have uh, uh, Galerie Lafayette, Grand Temple, La Samaritaine. Uh, we, we, have, we have many, uh, and uh, we are, you know, distributed quite, uh, uh, you know, in international markets, except, you know, from, from Italy is definitely uh, the, you know, the biggest part of my, uh, of our markets. I think Middle East and, uh, and Asia uh, are definitely our biggest markets. Um, so, yeah, this is it. We have another question for you uh, from Natalia Orlova and uh, for Nicolo. And how do you choose colors? Uh, because I'm, I'm afraid it was not clear enough. And then I have later, I w and then there is another question from S.G. Hazal Gurkan, which I think it's Tur from Turkey. Uh, again, from Nicolo, uh, can you describe the main target group briefly? So you have how to choose your colors and how you make your target group. Well, and then I have a, a, another question for Professor Scamellotti. Well, I, um, as I said, I always start from a mood board uh, and, and then from that mood board, I always try to extract the colors that I, that I love the most. It's very important, you know, always to create a balance between the colors I choose, but uh, mostly I do research in uh, leathers and fabrics that I see around and, and, you know, and try to find the perfect tones that I that I like, and then I um, I am I am lucky enough to then recreate that color with the with the leather factories I work with and with the fabric uh, companies I work with uh, according to my first sample first sample that you know that matches my 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 mood board. Um, also, the other uh, question was the target. Um, well, when it comes to the target, our clients is, uh, is you know, between uh, 25 and 35 years old mostly. Uh, and uh, it's, a, you know, it, it's an international client which has, you know, a, uh, you know, it's a shoe lover full of personality, someone that really loves color and loves the statement shoe. Um, and, um, and yeah, this is it. Thank you. Okay, right. I have a question for Professor Gamelotti, uh, which is, uh, if you uh, always work and uh, make, uh, use your knowledge and expertise on art or other fields? No, no, I mean, uh, I, I usually work on art, different kinds of arts, uh, manuscripts, uh, uh, painting, uh, sculpture, and so on from the scientific point of view, just in order to know materials, to, to help the restorers in a way. But I mean, uh, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, this kind of work can be useful to write a new history where sometimes materials say something about the idea in the thought of the painters. I think the, from this point of view, I mean, this kind of research from the knowledge point of view is quite important, not just in helping restoration, which is useful, but also from the knowledge point of view to, as I say, write a new history of art in a way. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, we have from um, Camilla Yusupov and other questions to Ma Master Bhutta. Uh, whom do they sell their threads to? Is it some textile company in Italy? I know that uh, you work from Loro Piana also. Uh, open the microphone, please. Microphone, microphone, open, open the microphone, Alessandro. Alessandro, open the microphone, or unless you can write them. Okay. Okay, okay. right, done. Yes. You who? Okay, I, I sell my goods. Uh, 
uh, to everyone who wants it. <laughs> Uh, because uh, uh, I um, I think the the same thing uh, that uh, told uh, uh, Professor Gamelotti that uh, uh, for um, natural dyes uh, and uh, traditional systems uh, of uh, using natural dyes uh, uh, dyes uh, there will be a new era uh, very very high number of people ask me. Uh, to to try <clears throat> with uh, natural dyes uh, new products uh, new systems uh, not only restoration like uh, uh, professor Gamelotti, but uh, uh, new uh, new products uh, and uh, yes i had, i had a good contact uh, with uh, um Piana, but uh, also other brands uh, like uh, uh, don't have jeans uh, uh, and many others who want uh, especially uh, do again uh, the history of uh, blue color that is uh, so important for Europe on textile. Okay, uh, uh, there is also from Gulnara Bissanova uh, another uh, question for you. Uh, Mr. Butta, uh, you are doing interesting work. Do you provide a tour in your farm? Because there, right. are, there are some there are some students who would like to come. Ah yes, <laughs> they can, they can come as soon as they open us and they let us uh, uh, going out. Uh, so they 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 can come. Uh, mm, a lot of students come here, especially uh, from Rome and from Ascoli Piceno. Uh, I have collaboration with universities. Uh, to teach uh, how to do these colors uh, and uh, how to do again these colors uh, to art for art and restoration. I yeah, promise uh, we will organize. I promise. Yes. 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 Now I, here. I am waiting play. here. Yes. Right. We have another question for you, Mr. Butta. Thank you for your presentation. This is Tiberi. Uh, which is a, a student from which I know from Amsterdam I, in the yeah. second year. Thank you for your presentation. It seems like a very interesting job. And I was wondering how you will see the future for this kind of dyeing. Uh, this is a problem because uh, uh, there is a, a great problem of uh, sustainability uh, because uh, these colors are not for all. Uh, expensive systems, uh, a lot of hours uh, uh, of um, making uh, uh, products uh, and colors. And so, uh, like uh, ancient times, uh, these uh, colors uh, are not for all. A little bit expensive, not so expensive, but a little bit more than uh, uh, chemical colors. Uh, so. Yeah. And um, I, I have got a couple of questions which are not related to your work, maybe with Professor Gamelotti, with Yulia uh, Abrosimova. Do you think there are differences in the perception of colors based on the geography of the society and nationality? Can religion influence the choice of colors in clothes? Yes. 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 I yeah. mean, this is very interesting questions. Yes. Of course, the answer is yes, yes, yes. Um, mm -hmm. it, the, 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 the question is very interesting and the answer is difficult to say in a short a time. No, I mean, uh, of course, religion, religion uh, uh, countries and so on uh, have a very important role in the perceptions of colors, I mean, the perception in Renaissance time in Italy is different from Renaissance perception even in Germany, which is not too far away. Can you imagine the different of perception to Asia, to Australia, and so on? I mean, it's a, it, it, really there is a, a big influence on the on the geography and of course also on the religions. 
Blue, for instance, in some religion have some meaning and different meaning in some other religions. The color have some meaning. Yeah, it has a lot. So, um, beautiful bright color designs of Alessandro Enrique makes me want to visit Sicily. What's uh, your relationship with your region, Alessandro? The, the, um, the relation with my uh, region is very important for me because uh, uh, part of my inspiration comes from, uh, from Sicily. Uh, I have a Tunisian origin, so it's a mix and match, but uh, the, the Sicily and what uh, I take from, from Sicily as inspiration is everything that uh, you can see in uh, all the uh, print. So I take not only the, the shapes, the color, but all the inspiration for the design. Non sento. Come? Fabiana, please open your microphone. Yeah, yeah, I have forgotten. So sorry. So uh, I have a, a combined questions to Alessandro and uh, Master Butta. Uh, to Alessandro, which fabrics he like to use for his collection? Another question for dear Butta. I think that Master Butta, you have also become our our sort of um, winner <laughs> of affection of today. Uh, what do you think about Zima blue color uh, from, so from Turkey? So it's someone who actually knows a lot about. So maybe Alessandro uh, uh, answers first and then uh, Alessandro Butta answers first and Alessandro Enrique later. Okay. Open the microphone again. Okay, open. I didn't understand which kind of blue. He says Zima blue color, but, but, but uh, we have already another couple of questions for you who were about, was about the uh, waste, the, the, the waste of uh, water and the pollution of water in colors. What do you think? Okay. I, 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 I think sure that, that you have uh, a very specific opinion being a natural dyer. Yes, this is a very uh, important uh, topic because uh, uh, every, every color uh, is uh, a part uh, of uh, a, a system, also in nature. And so uh, when uh, you uh, use a color, also you use a plant uh, or use everything, you must uh, know from where it comes uh, to where it goes. And if you use water, you must know from where comes water and where goes water. And uh, in my farm, we have a completely um, uh, system of uh, reusing uh, water again, also water used to extract uh, wood that used in, uh, in the, on, the, on the plants, on the fields. And uh, so we haven't uh, waste. We don't uh, discard uh, water or uh, um, use the plants. And uh, the, I know this is uh, impossible in industry. And uh, I know this is uh, in, uh, in my, my system is uh, not for all, like, like uh, I told before, is uh, only for small, uh, important and pressure production. Pre pres pre okay. Okay, we know pressure. So it means it's, uh, there's okay. another question about being expensive. Uh, what's the difference in price between a natural dye and a synthetic dye? On the, on the final product, uh, there is not uh, a, a great difference. On, uh, on textile, we calculate uh, a 30% uh, charge uh, um, on, uh, with the natural colors. Right, we have, a, I have another combined question for Alessandra Enriquez and Nicolò Beretta. And could you please briefly describe what, you, uh, what did you change in your businesses due to pandemic times? 
um, during pandemic times, we change uh, uh, everything, the way to work, the way to present the collection, uh, the way to sell the collection. And thanks to the digital, uh, I think that we uh, survival on this uh, disaster that we uh, we live. Um, and uh, I think that now uh, we are just uh, um, use all the harms that we have against this this uh, pandemic problem and uh, uh, the collection we in we try to uh, show to the press and to the the buyer uh, are more uh, uh, close to the uh, the digital uh, market presentation and exposition. On my side, um, I, uh, I have to say, uh, well, a lot of things changed, obviously, and uh, I, th I think first thing was distribution. Uh, we are a mostly wholesale uh, company uh, in terms of revenues, and um, so, you know, the, the, the sales campaign was really much um, digital, and we did digital appointment with our foreign buyers. Um, first of all, also I think in the, in the first uh, part of the pandemics, also even shooting a campaign like uh, for, uh, taking the pictures for 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 the advertising campaign was uh, was complex. So what we did uh, was uh, um, we 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 created uh, our campaign for the spring summer um, 2020. Uh, um, taking the picture via FaceTime uh, with the uh, with the top model Chiara Shelsi, uh, and so um, that that was a way to approach, uh, uh, you know, creating content like image content with the with the use of uh, um, with the use of the internet. Also, um, you know, during Fashion Week, we always used to do events and you know meeting, you know. Uh, all the people coming to Milan and, you know, showing the collection to a lot of people. Um, and, you know, we couldn't do this, obviously, this season. Uh, what we did was uh, doing one-to-one -one appointments with, uh, with the press and uh, with the influencers and with the, with the stylists. And um, uh, on one side, I have to say it was... Uh, uh, this thing was kind of positive because we took the time to uh, have a one-to-one -one relation with the, um, with the people that we wanted to invite to, to see the collection. And, uh, but overall, a lot of things changed, obviously, and uh, uh, I think we learned a lot and, uh, um, and uh, you know, hopefully everything will be, will be soon back to the way it was. Thanks. And I have another question for Professor Gamellotti from Giulia Trionfera. Uh, did you also study how to preserve the Egyptian blue? Uh, sorry, how do? Uh, how did you, did you study how to preserve? Per come preservarlo? Yeah, yeah. Come yeah. conservarlo? Yeah, uh, uh, one of the property of Egyptian blue is to be very, very stable. So there is no problem as far as the preservation. It's one of the most stable pigment in use uh, uh, ad adapted to all the kind of techniques in all the kind of materials. So this is a, a really a great quality. And there is a research line nowadays to take some properties from this uh, ancient pigment using in modern, up-to-date technologies. Thank you. Uh, to Alessandro Enriquez from Professor Ando, uh, I was really fascinated with the use of colors and patterns in love therapy collection. How could you face with the name genius of Elio Fiorucci? 
Uh, it was uh, uh, very beautiful because we had the possibility to work with all the archive uh, from the Fiorucci heritage and uh, with the memory of uh, uh, the sister of Floria, uh, I, I, we enter in the world of Fiorucci. The love therapy uh, brand uh, was uh, at the time in the 90s very uh, commercial, and uh, but there was uh, some uh, um, important design like uh, uh, what I use in the like the moticon or the other. Uh, uh, shapes that uh, was very iconic at the time and uh, using that exactly that um, uh, shapes we had a big uh, result with the uh, with the cell campaign so I uh, saw that the um, um, working with the memory uh, was very um, important for me and uh, I think that my work uh, is uh, close to that kind of uh, uh, DNA and this is the reason because uh, they asked me uh, to do a capsule together. Hey, thanks. And uh, Mehak froze to Alessandro Butta. Does these threads require special care and maintenance? No. No, no. Uh, you must wash them uh, exactly as uh, other uh, textile. And uh, uh, dyeing uh, in, with uh, good assistance uh, uh, means uh, that the color is uh, strong. And, the ver and not tender to light uh, or washing. So you don't uh, need uh, any uh, special system to wash. Thanks. So uh, we have another a couple of questions concerning the extraction, which uh, Alessandro Butto already explained in the video. You will get the video. So Nima and other, uh, other uh, of your colleagues will get some more information uh, when you will see again the, the process on in the presentation. Uh, another last question to Alessandro. How do you stylize outfits? Do, uh, no, do you make the, the style of your outfits yourself or do you have a stylist working with you? Is it hard to combine such bright colors? Uh, I do by myself. Uh, sometimes I use the studies for a um, uh, special project uh, with, uh, for example, with the um, picture of the exhibition. But for the lookbook, uh, I prefer to do by myself because I would like I, I like to mix uh, all the the print together because uh, I know that uh, if I work only with one print, uh, making uh, the only outfit with one print uh, is not what I really want to see. So the combination are in my mind and I prefer to do by myself. Hey, right. Uh, could you kindly repeat the name of the plants? I wrote, I just written the exact Stinctoria name. And then I ask now, uh, we, are, we are finished perfectly in time. It's absolutely perfect. At 1777, I ask um, Fulvia Bacchi, general manager of UNISH, to uh, say goodbye to everyone. We will have another uh, meeting. Uh, I hope it will be already in uh, interesting um, with, on, on Heritage on the 8th of April. So leave the floor for conclusions and a goodbye to Fulvia Bacchi. Thank you very much to all the speakers, uh, to all the attendees today. Today we learned much about color and this is very important because in my opinion, the knowledge of color is important for, for design, for fashion, for art. And uh, I am very happy about this seminar and uh, our next appointment is uh, on the 8th of April and I wait you all here with us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. It was really, really great. I think that the, our, the questions of our students uh, testifies 
the interest uh, for the speakers, for the topics. So thank you again, because this is a great, great and, uh, opportunity. And sorry, Professor, when we come back to the normality, I invite all the students to come to Milano wow. to visit our <laughs> wonderful location. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you very much. And we also will visit also Alessandro Putta, as I promised to my students. Before. So <laughs> we have many everyone. tours to do. <laughs> and also uh, Villa Farnesina. Alessandro. Also, I want, I want hear Professor Sgamellotti, please. <laughs> yeah, we, we will... Uh, We'll, we'll see also this. So thank you very much.